Welcome, everybody. I'm Dr. Mo Anderson, and I am here today with, I'm not kidding, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Marisha Johns is a retired educator, or we shouldn't, she's not retired, make that clear, <laughs> retired from education, from being a professor and a teacher. And she is now the creator of an award-winning blog, This Is Your Best Year. And she is, I'm gonna make sure I get this number right. I just saw this today. She is read in over 182 countries. You're so humble, I didn't even know that part. I'd be <laughs> shouting that from the rooftops. But welcome, Marisha Johns. Thank you for being here today with Dr. Mo Anderson and friends. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here and to talk to you about any and everything you want to talk about. That's that's the kind of attitude we like. That's the kind of attitude we like. Um, let's just start with easy stuff. You were a, an educator for, I forget how many years. Let's talk about how you got into education because that's a ministry to me. You know, my, my uh, parents are retired educators. How did you, what was your journey to get into that career? And you said it's it's a journey. It is because I was determined I was not going to be an educator. Mm. Uh, I come from a family of educators. My mom and my dad both taught. And then I had a, a lot of aunts that taught. I don't remember any um, uncles, but I had a lot of aunts that taught. And I remember getting ready to go to college. And you know, you still don't know what you want to do. Right. So I didn't even know what you call it, but I was going to hire and fire. That was, that was, <laughs> I was going to hire and fire. My mom said, well, maybe you want to teach school. Oh, no, I'm going to hire and fire. And she told me, she said, I don't think you want to do that. She said, because you cry too easily. She said, you'll be crying if you have to fire somebody or lay them off or whatever. So when I got to college, she kept talking about teaching. I knew I didn't want to do little kids, but I loved a general business class that I had. That was my favorite class and my favorite teacher. And to this day, it still is. And when I got there, I decided that I would try business. And I liked it. I, I really, really liked it. And I went to East Texas State University, which is now Texas A&M Commerce, the best mm -hmm. school in the world, bar none. Uh, <laughs> All right. Shout I, out. <laughs> I went there and they were known for education. And mm -hmm. I had some mentors there. So it, it was a it was a, a good experience being a, teach, uh, being a teacher's assistant there. And then I got to be uh, a graduate assistant where I taught a couple of classes. And I've never told anybody this, but when I signed up to go to the job fair for Fort Worth ISD, um, I thought I did pretty good on the interview, but they called my office where I was working at the time in the mm -hmm. business department. And I was on the line as my dean was talking to them. He was telling, you know, he was talking about me to them. So I got the job with Fort Worth ISD and I loved it. I didn't want to go to Dallas. I thought Dallas was too big. And mm -hmm. I worked almost all of my career at O.D. White High School. Yeah. Uh, it changed a little bit uh, toward the end when I was career and tech coordinator. I had to go to Southwest, but White was always home. Um, and then I just decided, my mentor, Miss Newton, had always told me, you will know when it's time to leave. She hmm. said, well, you'll just know. And I knew that year, and I was uh, over a grant. I knew it was just time to go, but I wasn't ready to stop teaching. So I got a job at TCC, and I liked it. I, I truly enjoyed teaching. So I think I've just been a teacher all my life. I've taught Sunday school, vacation Bible school. I, I just like it. And if the students are halfway interested, it makes it so much fun. And I, and I have to jump in there, which I didn't say. I did say you are one of my favorite people, but I didn't say you're my former teacher as well. And, uh, you know, for me, I just kind of went through education, checking boxes. But there were some people that could not be confined to a box. And you definitely had a big impact on me. And you're still a beautiful person, but I do remember you were quite young, I think just out of college when you came to ODY. And all the boys, we couldn't get their attention <laughs> when, they're, when they're talking about you. I'm sure you had the boys signing up for your class and had, had no interest in business. Anyway. But, but they, I know they learned because I did, and I am just so grateful that to this day we are still friends. Not only that, and sorority sisters, I want to give a shout out to our sorority sisters, the Royal Blue and White Zeta Phi Beta 
sorority. Your daughter, I think, too. Yes, your daughter is our is our sister as well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And you pledged while you were in college? I, was it like? I chartered while I was there. We chartered the Alpha Epsilon chapter. Did you? Yeah, we chartered. And um, you will know what I'm talking about in our sorority sisters. The first Zeta I saw when I crossed over that night was Sarah Wilson, Hazel Wilson. Oh, uh, Hazel. Mm. And when I looked at her, I thought, I'm going to be a Zeta. I'm, I'm going to be like Hazel. <laughs> Yeah, she she and my mom, who's a Zeta, were were tight, and you know we were all saddened by her loss. But what a legacy legacy she left! I know she poured into both of us, and and along with our family and others, inspired our dedication to community service. Because what you did as an educator and what you're doing now, which is what we're about to get to, I think are just really ways of nurturing and educating and and helping people to be their personal best. So. You retired, and did you start thinking about being a blogger before? Were you planning ahead? Was this a passion, or was it just on a whim? How did that come about, that transition? Um, first of all, I think it probably was a whim at first because when I really got serious about it, I said, I'm going to do WordPress. Well, I didn't know I already had an account in WordPress, so I had made an account a long time right. I was trying to just, you know, find my way. I like to write, but I knew I couldn't be a serious journalist. That wasn't me. Mm -hmm. And um, I like the idea of blogging because there's so many different ones out there. You can, right. you can find something about anything. And in the magazines, they weren't speaking to me anymore. They either put me way, I thought, too old or too young. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was somewhere in the middle. So I thought, well, I can just write about what I like and Hopefully people will come along with it. And that's what I did. And you do it well. And our topic for today is, is second act, mm -hmm. which uh, generally that torn term was coined to talk about people who are retired, semi-retired, and now looking to start a new career. Because, I mean, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 now retirement is not the same as it has been in the past. People are still very... Uh, vibrant, energetic, no shade on people in the past, but, you know, 40 is not the new, uh, 50 is not the new 40, but it's not the old 50 either, you know, so I'm a grandmother of three, I know you're a grandmother, but I still was out, you know, at Mario Andretti driving race cars a couple of weeks ago, so there's a lot there, there's the wisdom that you've gained, there's the network that you have, and you transition into something that, even though you weren't trained in it traditionally, I suspect you had a lot of passion for, like you said, for writing, for sharing. And now you found a way to make it to make it spread all over the world, as a matter of fact. How did you first learn about blogging? I'm going to ask two questions in one, so you could just talk. How did you learn about blogging as a business? And then how did you market it? Because as I said, you're award winning, you're read all over. Those are two different things. But if you can answer both those questions for me, I'd be interested to know. Um, I learned about blogging um, just by chance. I, you know how you just started to read certain things and you're just kind of skimming through the internet and you're just going around. And then certain certain blogs start catching my attention. And they wouldn't be long posts. They may not post but once a week. Sometimes they didn't even post a, a once a week. And I'd be interested in what they were talking about. It could be, a, it started out like with food and then it went to maybe clothing. It mm -hmm. I talked about, they said some, they talked about retirement. There was always some about beauty or whatever, but I like the ones about life. And it was from their perspective. So they had gone out and done some things. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that idea. And as a business, as you continue to read, it looks like your favorite bloggers, they some of them get bigger and bigger, and some of them will even tell you about their business. Uh, one of my favorite ones is uh, Black Girls Who Brunch. Mm -hmm. I, I like that one, yeah. And, and I like her, and I, I follow her on every social media that she has, but she's very giving, mm -hmm. you know, and when I say giving, she's very giving and giving out advice to people right. who might not know. And um, I'm one of those people, I will ask. 
Mm -hmm. I, I will ask, you know, can I do this? Can I do this? How did you do this? How did you do that? Uh, so I think that's the teacher in, my, in me. I'm very inquisitive. So I mm -hmm. learned about the business part through them and how to write a blog. You know, and some people, it's sort of like a novel. Uh, you, you're the author, you're the writer, but you know, just personally, if you're going to read somebody, mm -hmm. it's a certain one you like. It's right. a certain way they write. There right. are some people that, that you know, that, that they are very good writers, but they don't catch your interest. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I was about blogs. And I've, I've grown up with some of them. You know, I've been following them for six, seven, eight years. And then I get some new ones and I may have to, you know, go off and then, a lot of them quit, you know, so it's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's a journey. Or, or take a hiatus, like, like me, you just get mm -hmm. spread thin and you just mm -hmm. turn your focus somewhere else for a while. You mentioned that, uh, you mentioned one blog that you like in particular, are there any other, uh, bloggers that are favorites and why? Um, this is going to, this is going to show my age, but I love all of those with AARP because they, oh, they're good. Yeah. They, <laughs> they are really good. Some of them are funny. Some of them are, are serious. Right. And that's, I think that's what I like about it. You never know what they're going to talk about, but it's always pertaining basically to you or somebody that you mm -hmm. do. Know. So I like that. Um, and when you have time, I like reading yours, but I understand you have other things that you have to do. Thank you. Um, there are some, um, some entertainment blogs that I read, but I'm not that serious about them. But yeah, the AARP blogs, they, I, I really like them. So cool. Cool. So do I, as you mentioned, there are all types of bloggers, all types of topics. And, and you know, it's the same with books. There are some I like, some I don't care for mm -hmm. that genre or whatever. It doesn't mean it's poorly written or it's a bad book. It just doesn't appeal to me. So one of the things I'll say to people, we are both bloggers, but she's far more accomplished at it than I am, is that, you know, if you've got a topic that you're uh, passionate about, that you know about, share. You don't have to be like, someone else you may be you may be feeling a niche just the thing we're waiting on we don't know that we're missing you uh, so you chose I mean you had so many areas you could choose from with your background why did you choose to write to write for women of a certain age I felt like a lot of people weren't writing for me um, it's like I tell people my best girlfriend and I have been best friends for since second grade. So that's how <laughs> that is a long time. Right. But we grandmother so differently. Really? You know, she'll say, she'll, she'll say, um, he's gonna spend the night. He doesn't want to go home. We just think we'll keep him. And I'm going like, no, no, he's going home. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, right? <laughs> Where are y'all? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> wonderful parents, he is going home. But I try to make every every time he comes special. We mm -hmm. try to do something special. I tell everybody, if you want to be a rocking grandma, that's you. If you don't, that's that's okay. Mm -hmm. Everything is different. If you want to continue to work, it's okay. Right, right. If you don't want to work, it's okay. If you want to let your hair go gray, it's okay. If you want to do it purple, it's okay. We mm -hmm. are not our mothers and our mothers were not their mothers. Right. So I couldn't find that. I found a little bit more of it as time has gone on, but I couldn't find that. I even wrote some magazines one time and told them I was still trying to take the, the printed magazine. I said, mm -hmm. but you've aged me out of it. Mm -hmm. you know, you've aged me out of it. Or either you've, you've either put me way too young or way too old. I'm right. somewhere in the middle. And it depends on what, what time of day I wake up or, mm -hmm. you know, how much sleep I got or how I'm going to look. You know? so, <laughs> right. Right. And that's, that's, that's a good point that you make is that people, you know, that okay, boomer and this in our generation, we are still and we should not forget we are the second largest generation, uh, you know, after millennials, but our cohort is powerful when it comes to lobbying when it comes to purchasing power, uh, when it comes to movie watching. And that does bother me when I go to look for something and there's, it's, it's like being a person of color. And then I see no one like me. All I see is a bunch of, you know, older men, Harrison Ford with children, with, you know, young, young girls who are like they're 15, 16 years old. I don't want to see that. Now you show me Meryl Streep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm enthralled. So I'm glad that you are speaking to my generation. I very much enjoy, um, 
that you shared too about places to go and things to do because I'm not on here all the time looking at every post and following every stream. So that's that's a great thing that you cover as well. And we have to realize that, that, that we're all different. We have to take care of ourselves. But like you said, we're the second biggest population. We're still exercising. We're still mm -hmm. in the health, you know, but we have to do things differently. It's like, you cannot pay me to do a burpee now. You just <laughs> my knees, my knees. Yes, I'm just not. You know, and I'm I'm old enough now to tell her I'm not doing that. I'm mm -hmm. just I'm just not going to do that. We we need to find something else to do. But you know, even the advertisers realize now that we we have a spendable income that we mm -hmm. can spend on. They there are some people that probably will never retire from their jobs. You know, they, right. they just like working, but then there are those that are going to travel the world. For, for those who do want to retire and are thinking, you know what, I, or they retired and they're thinking, you know what, I have ridden around in the RV, we've been to some different countries, or I fished for so many days, I want to do something else. I realize I still have the energy and interest in a career or in helping someone, what would you say would be some generic initial steps that they should take in investigating, trying to decide what's next? First of all, I would tell them now is the, probably the best time when you're thinking about retiring or when you have a disposable income. Because I always get tickled and I still love Oprah, but Oprah would always say, you should do your passion. You right. should do your passion. But I would always tell my students, Sometimes your passion has to become your hobby until you can pay your bills. And so as you know, as we move on, we a lot, a lot of people are downsizing, they're getting rid of their houses, going right. smaller. Mm -hmm. um, they you don't buy as many clothes because you're not going that many places, or you don't care. You get to the point where <laughs> this, this is it. I am who I am. And right. I might get, you know, I'm not, I'm not here for you. I think mm -hmm. you should investigate. It's sort of like when you were in high school. And that's one thing I, I fault people about now is do a little bit of this and do a little bit of that to see if you like it. Mm -hmm. you, you might think, oh, I'm going to like doing this and get in there and hate it. Right. So right. and don't just do it for the money. The, if, if the money is going to come, it will come if you know. But if it doesn't, if you really enjoy it, I could tell you that I was going to be an artist. I can't draw. I can't sing. I can't do any of that. But. What I do like to do is to write. And I've investigated. I mean, like I said, I've talked to people, I've mm -hmm. taken classes, um, and they will tell you that, you know, there may be money, there may not be money, but it'll right. be fun. So go out and investigate and find what you're really passionate about. You know, mm -hmm. just don't do something because everybody else is doing it. And then don't worry about the naysayers. Oh, yes. They, because and they, they will, will be there. <laughs> they they will, will be there, there. right. You left your job for this. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do that? So don't, you know, I've been writing this blog a long time and I have people that I know very well who never read it. Mm -hmm. They have never read anything that, I, that, that I've done. Uh, even when I was writing for my hometown paper or uh, the Fort Worth Black News, and I have to give a shout out to Jill Darden because she's hey, the Jill. one that let me write anything. Um, but they never read it, but they would right. tell you about other people that they read. So you don't do, you don't worry about the naysayers. You, right. you prop yourself on the back, or you pat yourself on the back and keep going. Absolutely. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Mo Anderson, and this is Marisha Johns, a Dallas Fort Worth based blogger and uh, creator of This Is Your Best Year. We have a question for you, Timothy Kinney wants to know how to contact you. I'll ha I have your website, but if you want to tell them about your website and social media, how they can find you, and we'll get back to the interview. Okay. You can find me at www.thisisyourbestyear.com, and This Is Your Best Year is written just like it is on the screen, just one word, or you can go to our Facebook page. We have a Facebook page, and it's This Is Your Best Year. Uh, you can go to Instagram, This Is Your Best Year also. And we have a YouTube channel, which is also This Is Your Best Year. So either one of those, you can contact us and we'll get back in touch with you. Thank and you. And I, I just dropped that in the comments for you guys. Great question. Thank you. And that's on me. I should have said that as, as part of our introduction. I normally give the website. I'm just so excited. And uh, for me, uh, drmoanderson.com, you're on my Facebook page, but uh, you can contact me that way as well, because I'm looking for more interesting guests. You are actually 
Uh, my live webinars have all been for my nonprofit, Drop the Drugs. So you are actually my first guest for this series, Dr. Mo and Friends. So my inaugural guest, I'm excited <laughs> to uh, to have you. And, and I just want to, before I go to the next question, what you said in regards to people uh, not reading your blog, you know, I've had retail business, my practice, I'm now writing shameless plug over my uh, <laughs> over my shoulder here of my latest book, but I have had so many people do the same thing. Uh, either I haven't gotten your book yet, you know, it's a year later, or I have it, but I haven't read it, which I think, what, why would you tell me that? I don't need to hear that. I'm never going to ask you. Let me just assume that you read it. But I, I gave somebody an analogy. I'm like, it's like I come over for Thanksgiving dinner. You've been cooking for two days. I take a plate of food home and then three weeks later, I'm like, I got that food. I haven't eaten it, but I, <laughs> I have it. I'm, I'm going to eat it though, girl. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> so I'm like, y'all, something you just shouldn't say to people who are out there trying to, I, those unsolicited comments about how you're not supporting our work. It's okay. But the, the other side of that is, as you know, you can't write for those people. You can't write for your family and friends. You're not going to grow if that's your business model is that my family and friends are going to like, share, and buy because they may not, but that can't be the basis, the foundation of your business. That's, that's a nugget you shared right there. My next question is, what's next for the blog? And you, Wait, now I got another. Who, if you could interview any woman of a certain age, and I'm not going to say living or dead because I really don't think you should interview dead people, but if you could <laughs> interview... <laughs> I just, I don't know if that's a law or not, but I don't want to see that. So if you could interview any woman of a certain, certain age, living woman, or if you want to name multiple women, who would it be and why? Okay. Well, she's going to have to come back because she is dead. At least they said she was. I am fascinated by Lady Bird Johnson. Mm. I, I don't, you know, and I'm just... For some reason, she just she's always fascinated me. But they have a new book out about her, and I've seen documentaries on her. She was so smart. She was she dynamic, was yeah. Yeah, she was she was the brains behind everything, mm -hmm. and she was she was a wonderful partner for Lyndon Johnson. She was the, was the yin to the yang. I would love to interview her because she owned radio stations. Um, I remember they said when she would travel, she would drive from Washington to Texas, and she would take her maid with her. And when she would stop at the hotel, and they wouldn't want the maid to say, she would hop in her car and they'd go someplace else. So wow. she was, she was, you know, ahead of the civil rights movement and all that. Mm -hmm. Another one would probably be um, Michelle Obama's mother. Oh, I love I her. her mother because wow. you know how you how you raise this person. Mm -hmm. She saw things that that Michelle saw, but she saw them differently. So yes. I, I would love to interview her. And my last one, would be Rita Marino. I really uh, like. She's her. hilarious. She, yeah. She's so funny, but I think she was. She's a She's been behind the scenes. People don't know how much she has done for the civil rights movement and things mm -hmm. like that. They, they yeah. just don't know because they always see this smiling, pretty little lady. But right. I would love to interview those three people. And yeah. yes, Lady Bird is gone, but yeah. But the legacy, legacy she left, you know, I was just in Austin doing a, a wealth and wellness workshop with <laughs> Sheila Harvey. Hey, Sheila, hope you made it home safely. And just, you know, all around when we see all the different things, uh, you know, she contributed to and, and her legacy. And I think they downplayed it because they didn't want smart, strong mm -hmm. first ladies. But she's definitely one people should learn more about. You know, they have the Wildlife Center, which was what I started mm -hmm. that center, started that sentence for. And uh, it is just remarkable. If you go to Austin, that's one of the places people might not recommend, but a fun place to visit and tour. Uh, if you have a comment, if you have a question, uh, we have a very amazing uh, guest today, Marisha Johns, a blogger, educator, uh, grandmother, honey. Are you honey or is the grandson honey? I'm, I'm honey. Honey, I'm, yes. I am it's honey. Just, uh, the sweetest uh, uh, grandmother name I've heard. How, well, while we're on it, how, how, where did that come from? I was in a Sunday school class about 30 years ago, and my Sunday school teacher's grandkids came in. They said, honey, can we have some candy? 
And I was like, honey, she said, well, they, they didn't live in the state, so they didn't right. come that often. Her husband called her honey. And so that's how they called her. And I said then, 30 years ago, if I ever have grandchildren, they're going to mm -hmm. call me honey. So I am honey. And the funny part is another lady in church, she is honey too. I am honey one because she oh. used the name also. <laughs> And here, I'd never even heard it before. And you've got two at, two at your church, honey one, honey two. Mm -hmm. That is delightful. You mentioned earlier that you used to write for the uh, Fort Worth, that you write a monthly column for the Fort Worth Black News. And I know, you know, Jill well, I've known her a long time, very supportive of our community. And But you also wrote for the Longview News Journal, mm -hmm. uh, two very different types of publication. Uh, how were they different? How how were they alike? Um, the first time I started to write for Jill, I contacted her because we were getting ready to do the state mandated test. Mm -hmm. And I told her, my parents, our parents here at ODY will read your newspaper before they read the Star-Telegram. Mm -hmm. So can I write something giving them the information on the state mandated test? And she said, okay. yes. And so from then on, it just kind of took a life of its own. And I would just basically write about education. I would write about, well, if you, you know, you, your child didn't go to summer school, if they go to the grocery store, you can teach them math at the grocery store. Or I would let them know if there was, um, you know, a free um, a class that the kids could take. Or I would tell them report card times were coming out. And Longview, uh, I remember sending something off one time and I've never met Peter Lis Litersky. And he's retired now from uh, the Longview News Journal and they're under new management. And okay. he knew what I wrote. And I continued to write for about a year and a half, maybe two. But I wrote about my life in Longview, of uh, things that happened in Longview. I wrote about my grandfather. I wrote about my, my uh, the street I lived on. Mm -hmm. Different things I felt about growing up in a small town. The difference between a small town and a city and what I liked about it. I love your initiative. That's what I'm hearing over and over again is that you are intrepid and that you will ask for, you know, what you want, that you will make suggestions, that you're not afraid in a very nice way to say what's missing. And things won't change for us, for the media, for organizations, if we're not willing to speak up. So many people now are worried about being canceled or mm -hmm. whatever they think might happen to them. And, and I really fear that we're going to get to the point that you know, we lose that ability to speak up. And, and it can still, you can disagree agreeably. You can make a point without being insensitive. And it's not always a criticism. We have to, there's a, a Japanese uh, word, kaizen, and it's, uh, the, it's generally used in business, but I use it, I talk about it a lot because it's continuous improvement. And so, you know, you shouldn't always receive it as negatively because somebody has an idea, which is what a lot of people do that knee jerk. Oh, this is bad. But and I'm saying all of this to encourage people to speak up. If you see something's missing, something lacking, something could be better. That's all you're doing is helping with personal or professional growth and development. Right. That's true. Um, and what I remember one time. And um, I was at Wide, and then we took some kids to Dallas, and I can't remember what organization it was, but they had a lot of big mucky mucks come and speak, which was really good. Mucky mucks. Mucky yeah. mucks. Okay. And they sent all the students around the perimeter, mm -hmm. and then they had people on tables that were eating. Now, I have students, and children think that when you eat, they should eat. Right. And so I remember going back to them. We stopped and got them something to eat and they went on. But I remember getting back and I, I, I uh, wrote the people and I told them, I said, I didn't think it was nice what you did. You know, the children, I, I, this is what exactly what I told them. I didn't want your chicken, but the children probably did. You right. know, they just saw it. I didn't think it was right. So they invited us back again. And the kids had lunch that time. I said, right. yeah, it's, it's just the idea. I didn't write mm -hmm. it in a bad way. You know, y'all could have done this and that. I just exactly. told them how I felt, you know, so and, and next time we were there, you know, they got dinner or lunch rather, you know. Right. And you get you gave time for it to process and didn't immedately assume that they were being disparaging, that they did it on purpose. Sometimes people are just around. It's right, just, right. Just blinders on. They're just not thinking and you brought it to their attention. Kudos to you. You've always been a great advocate for your students. Um, what's next 
for the blog? Where are you, where are you taking it next? It's gone a long way, but I want to hear what's ahead. Um, and while you're I, thinking, you guys who are watching, if you've got a question for her, if you've got a comment, uh, feel free to drop it in the comments. I'll let her know. And also, if you just like what we're doing here, keep those thumbs up and hearts coming because I, I just really admire this woman and I appreciate her time. And I hope you're enjoying what she's sharing as well. But we're happy to entertain questions. So feel free to drop your questions in the chat box. I think what's next is I'm going to make the blog better. I'm going to stick with the blog. I'm not going to spread myself too thin. Uh, you know, they now having some more social media. I'm an I'm a, a organization of one, sometimes two. Understood, you know, right. Two. So I have to kind of pick and choose. If I say I'm going to cover something because I've been asked to cover things, then I, then I, I try to cover mm -hmm. it. I may not be able to go. And if somebody says they can go for me, then I need to show the people that I'm going. So I want to make the blog where it's it's better than it, it has been and now have the time to do it. I want to expand to some things. Um, we got our first paid partnership with somebody. So we were excited about that. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> no, I'm not rich, but it was it was just an honor to do it. And I'm, I'm looking to uh, expand on the YouTube um, I have this series called, um, uh, it's about women and it's worked out pretty good, but I'm trying to, if you go back and look at the first one and the last one, it's a whole lot of growth up in there because right. you go like, Ooh, maybe I should take this down. But yeah, I just want to make it better than it is. I want to keep people informed. Uh, sometimes we write about stuff and some, I remember somebody said, but you wrote about things about men. Well, if you have a husband or a son or a grandfather, they need to take these tests. Men don't like to take tests. So you, mm -hmm. you have to remind them it's time to take this, this test. Men come up with disease just like anybody else. Sure. Or, if it's, or if it's something for a child. I always tell people, if you are a woman of a certain age, if you know a woman of a certain age, or will one day be a woman of a certain age, we are for you because we're going to talk about a little bit of everything. It could be funny. And I want it to stay that way. I, I want it to glow, grow globally, but I want to keep the people in North Texas involved. Yeah, you know, because sometimes we there are a lot of free things or things that don't cost a lot of money that we don't know about in Florida right. or Arlington or you know Dallas. We mm -hmm. so I want to keep people informed, and I've met some fantastic ladies uh, that have done wonderful things that nobody knows about. Right. And the people will help out if they know about it. So I just wanted to grow. Um, if if it blew up, I'd be extremely happy. But if it doesn't, if it stays where you know where it is, and I'm I'm happy. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, and I know that we have in common that our big picture is to make a difference. Yes, mm -hmm. we'd like to make a dollar, but we're trying to make a difference. And whatever happens after that is God's will. And you are certainly did that doing that. And you made a good point. I, I'm glad that you write sometimes about men because we know it's it's proven by research that married men, men in you know committed relationships, partnerships live longer because of women saying. What's this mole? What's this rash? You've been coughing for a week. You need to go to the doctor. And that's not me making that up. That's that's a fact. So yeah, everybody needs to be aware of the needed preventive and diagnostic tests. So good for you. And, and good that she asked the question to help understand why you were doing that and not just making assumptions. And one, and one other thing, I, I want women my age to realize that you are valuable. Yes, very. Good. And, and you still have thoughts, you still have dreams, you still have, you still want to do things. Um, and, and if you can do your dream, then do it. it if it's a success for you, then right. that's the good thing. So don't let anybody decide that, that this is what you should be doing. You know, mm -hmm. you're at the stage of life where you know what you want to do. And if you want to try it, just try it. You, you've tried things when you were younger. You right. Know? And sometimes it, it gets a little hard. It's like when I when I did the zip line the first time, I was good. <laughs> the second time, I was trying to climb back down that thing. And I don't know what it was about it, but really? I was back time. I didn't want to do it. You went, but you I, went I it. backwards. But if you want, you know, it, as you age, we, we we're all gonna we're all gonna age. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. so, just try it. Just just live your life to the best of your ability for as long as you can. Right. As Hazel would say, do what you can while you can. 
Exactly. And I, I and we have the t-shirt, as they say. We got the receipts and the t-shirt. Literally, we've got some comments here I want to share with you. Thank you guys for uh watching live. And this will be on the on the page if you want to share it now with your uh network to your share to your news feed. We'd appreciate it because uh, I want people to know about this is your best year and Marisha Johns, because really what she's sharing may be written for women of a certain age, but it's applicable to women of all ages and to men as well. I don't, I don't even think your uh, advice that as I read it, your blogs and the things you share are gender friendly, but I understand you have a target demographics. Cynthia Hicks Brown, former speech pathologist, studied speech therapy at UNT says, keep moving, ladies, your future is so bright, you need some shade. Hey, hey, <laughs> thank you. Stephania Roberts, a fellow author, whatever you touch, you will do well. And uh, Doc Holliday, Marie Holliday says, my mother is from Longview and I was born in Longview, the maze. Uh, you know, Doc Holliday, did you uh, know that about the Longview I connection? I did not. So we have to get together. Yeah, we have to get together and, and, and talk about Longview. And look, we might be related. <laughs> might be, might be a small world. Pam Whiteberry, thank you so much. Uh, looking forward to buying my books. Oh, you gave me a nice little segue since you say <laughs> that. Hey, shameless plug. That's it. We said you got to speak up. You got to speak up. Uh, DrMoyAnderson.com, and you can see my, this is my second act. I started my second act early. As you know, I'm a, a dentist by training and got into writing and just love it from doing columns like you to writing books. So you can, what, it, what you're passionate about, you can do it. Don't let anybody talk you out of your hobby, out of your thing you just love. So uh, Honey is also... A honey is so great. CC Ward says she's a granta too. Granta's got to stick together. It looks like you got an invite to be on someone else's show. Oh. And uh, we let Tim Kenny know how to contact you and all of you. I can't go through all the lists. You can check out the comments later and respond as, as you like, uh, Marisha. But uh, a lot of people out there enjoying what you're saying and loving what you're doing. Um, and so we talked about what's next, next for the blog. My final question, and then we'll let you wrap up with whatever you want to share. My, my question is, what's next for you personally? Um, well, since COVID is finally leaving. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> let me do it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but I'm going, like I say, I'm going to do the blog. I'm, I'm going to try to travel a little bit. My first trip probably out of the country will be to Canada to see my brother. That, that, that's it. I want to go you see my brother, brother in Canada. Wow. My brother's lived in Canada for probably the last 50 years. He is, has dual citizenship and he's married. So uh, there she's from there and his children are there. So the, that's where he is. Uh, I just want to live my life to the best that I can. I, I want to be around my friends. I want to stay connected to them. Mm -hmm. um, this will be in, in two years. I will have been a Zeta for a, a long time. <laughs> and we, we talked about that. We've talked about our, our class reunion that, that, mm -hmm. that should have been this year. Uh, I just want to enjoy life. I want, I want new opportunities. I want to try new things. Um, I don't know. I, look, I want to learn how to uh, swing out, but I have to find a party. Right, girl. You, you and me both. I've taken classes like five times and still can't swing out. Well, just... we, took, we took two, and this is so funny because my husband told me, he said, if I learn, I'm just only going to dance with you. I said, oh, no, if I learn, I'm going to dance with everybody. I'm going to so, be out there. <laughs> we, were, we were so bad that when we went back the second time, I told her, look out, I am so sorry we came back. I know you were hoping we didn't come back. But I would, I would just little things like that. In, enjoy life. Uh, my mm -hmm. grandson will be 13, so I'm kind of sort of not his wow. favorite. Wow, time is fast. Yeah. So I just want to have fun. I want, I want to live and let live. I want to hang out with you and we can go yeah. back to New York. Or and we got, we got Makeup Boule coming up. Oh, that was fun. That trip we took to New York. Oh my goodness. That was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there is a lot to look forward to. And there's a lot going on. There's still a lot going on. COVID is not over. We recognize that. And a lot of people have been in difficult 
place is, uh, you know, employment wise and, and just being laid off and businesses closing, which is why, you know, I wanted to broach this subject of a second act, starting another career, turning your passion into profit. You've got expertise in it. And I think it can be helpful to a lot of people. And, you know, when you start something new too and, and start those cognitive processes of learning new things and watching YouTube videos and doing the research, it really does affect your physiology. You just get a whole different look on life. You just feel better. You're excited to get up. And that's the joy that you have. And that's the joy that I want for everyone, that inner peace and that optimism to get us through you know, there's always going to be tough times, but if you have that, you'll have something to look forward to. I will give you a final opportunity to share if there's anything I haven't covered. Uh, we do have a person who wants to swing out too, but I don't think that's a question, but <laughs> all right, Ruby, if we get a class going, I'm going to find you on here. <laughs> so that resonated with some other non-swinger outers. Non-swinger outers. Um, but to wrap it up, I just want to tell people, try something new. Do what you mm -hmm. want to do. If it doesn't hurt anybody, do what you want to do. Because life is so short. It is right. so short. Um, we've all lost people to COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was looking on Facebook and it's not my class, but a couple of classes ahead of me in my hometown, they put people up there. I, I know they had less than 200 people in their class. They've lost 60 something classmates. So oh life is so, is so short. You, you never know from one day to the next and what, you know, saying, I wish I had, and you had the opportunity to do it. So, so go for it and, and have a good time. Be, thank God for life continue to pray, lift everybody up and go and have a good time because this is your best year. You never know what the next year is going to be. So make this one your best year. Absolutely. Well said. I won't try to add to that. I want to thank you again, Marisha Johns, for joining us. An amazing um, entrepreneur, advocate, blogger right here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. If you haven't connected with her, her website is in the comments. This is your best year .com. You can find her on uh, from there. You can find the social media links. Right. I think I saw those when I looked earlier today and connecting. You'll know what she's doing. You'll know what's going on in the Dallas Fort Worth area. We wish you the best continued success with your journey and your goals. And we we'll keep doing what you're doing. Very proud of you. And to all of you. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching this live or if you're listening to a replay or archive, you might be on, the, on my podcast or seeing this on YouTube. Like, share, comment. We appreciate you helping us spread the good news of the gospel of a second act. <laughs> so we're signing out. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.